So where's where we headed today? Well, we're actually not going anywhere in particular. We're just going to ride around in this lovely traffic and talk about scams because, well, we've just gotten back from Beijing and while we were there, as I'm sure you noticed, we had every scam under the sun pulled on us. And in fact, you can go take a look. Uh, here's a video I did. I put it up last week. It's got all the, the scams people try to pull on us while we were up there. So we thought we'd talk about scams in China versus scams in the West. So let's start with some Western scams. How about you tell us about something that happens in America? Well, I don't know so much about the entire country, but uh, a scam that one of my friends actually went through in New York City was called the Money First Keys Later uh, scam. And that's a big problem in New York City because it's notoriously difficult when outsiders come to try to rent a flat in New York City. What happens is a lot of uh, people get so excited that uh, at an offer for a, a cheap rental that they'll actually give deposit money to fake landlords. Um, they'll ask for $700, maybe $1,000 up front before they hand over the keys and actually they turn out not to have uh, any rights over the uh, building or property and they end up losing all of their money to fake landlords. So oh, that's pretty that's, rough. That is pretty bad, man. All right, well, I'll throw in one from the UK. Um, it's, what you've just said is more of a, like a, if you're, I guess if you're living in America or something, this is more of a tourist scam, which to be honest, in China, in Beijing, sorry, all the scams that we experienced were tourist scams. Um, and if you go to the UK, like London, if you go to a touristy area, you often have a lot of Eastern Europeans hanging around, like Romanians, Albanians, and you know, from, from those sort of countries. And what they'll do is they'll play these little gambling games, like uh, find the lady. You know what that is, right? Yeah. That's where you have those th three little cups and you do, do the whole switching thing, yeah. And uh, put a little ball underneath and they've got all sorts of tricks and what they'll do is they'll get one of their friends to pretend to be another tourist and he'll just win a huge amount of money and then you you kind of think oh cool like I can win some money too like so let me try and there's no way you can win it's all sleight of hand so people lose a lot of money to that that's that's one thing that happens in the UK um, yeah how about another thing from America I'll steal a little U-turn here um, in America, there is pretty much like, if you're talking about tourist scams, like something that we encountered in Beijing, I would say the majority of them are just selling counterfeit goods for exorbitant prices. And that usually the, the source is from China, actually Guangdong, where we are, where all these factories put out fake Gucci bags, fake LV bags, fake Ray-Bans, fake, uh, uh, what's it called, Rolex watches and things like that. Now. The reason it's a scam is number one, they're counterfeit goods, and number two, instead of paying $10 that they're worth, they'll charge three, four hundred dollars for them. So a lot of people get uh, get scammed by that, but for the most part, tourist scams are kind of hard to come by in America. Okay, all right, that's pretty cool. It's good to know. <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna just go ahead and uh, throw in a an African scam, okay? okay? Since that's where I'm from, originally from South Africa. Sure. Uh, everybody knows about the 419 scams um, and that's when you're contacted by some Nigerian prince or someone who claims to be in government and they've got some huge amount of money and or something valuable and the only way they can release it is with your help and you have to help them by giving them some money or something you know in order to get it released and you know it that's how it goes but i've actually got an example of a scam that i helped foil and these guys are pretty clever going up here i don't know i just want to check it out yeah let's take a look so these guys are pretty clever and what they did was they contacted a friend of mine i was working with this guy he had an it company and what they did was they actually came and well they gave him a call they said hey uh we're, we've got this big IT project and we see that you run an IT company. Wow, I, I wonder. That's pretty steep. I don't we're not going down that, dude. I don't want to scrape your body off the floor. I think I could do it. You reckon? I think so. Bro. Okay, we'll come back. <laughs> okay. okay. I, maybe I shouldn't, but I think I could do it. Anyway. All right. And uh, they said, you know, all you need to do is put down a tender fee, you know, like it was from Botswana or something and they're like well we've got this big tender coming up and we think your company's perfect for it so let's make let's work a deal here so he agreed to meet them and he just asked me to come along you know and so 
I came along with him, I sat at a different table, and they came in, they're all dressed in suits, they looked all smart. Uh, these two African blokes from wherever they're from. And uh, they sat down and started talking, and I just came up to the table and said, all right, so what's the deal here? And they were like, uh, looked very, very surprised and uneasy, and I said, well, I'd like to see some, some official paperwork. My name is Constable so-and-so from the <laughs> South African police, which is bullshit, but you know. <laughs> Um, and they they just basically they got up and they ran they almost they almost knocked the table over obviously no they, they were criminals they ran out so quickly they got in their car and sped off <laughs> so it was definitely a scam <laughs> yeah so that's an African scam hilarious yeah so let's talk about some Chinese scams and I'd like you to start with well in fact you know let's start with one that I forgot to mention in my Beijing scams video sure man this is steep Dude. Dude, no way. Oh, no yeah. way. I think I could I could make it, but I'm worried that I'd go over the next one, you know? I wouldn't be able to stop, and there's a kid down there. Dude, don't do it. 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 It's a bad idea. If there, if there wasn't a kid down there, I'd do it, because... I believe you. Yeah, we'll come back with yeah. proper bikes. Okay, anyway. Um, black taxis. Let's talk yep. about black taxis now. Sure. That's the only scam I've ever fallen for in China, and believe it or not, it was in Hong Kong. And I'd just come off a very long flight, had a stopover flight, I'd been flying for like 20-something hours. And I got to, the, got to the airport in Hong Kong, and I was really tired, and this guy came up and he was speaking really good English, and he's like, hey, uh, do you need a taxi? And I thought, well, why not, you know. So he said, yeah, it'll probably be about 200 Hong Kong dollars, and I said, all right, great. So then, uh, yeah, because it normally costs about 130, 140, right? With a real taxi. So I thought, ah, I'll pay a little extra, a little, little less hassle. And I went down, got in this minivan, and he drove me kind of into this alley near the border, but like some strange place. And then he wrote out an invoice for 800 Hong Kong dollars and handed it to me. Well, that's a bit pricey. And I was like, you know, come on, man. The guy said 200, and he's like, no, but he didn't you know take this whatever like toll fee into account and stuff and he really uh -huh. just he really just scammed me and he wouldn't let my luggage out the car because it was in the, the boot of the car okay and i had no choice i had to pay him and that's the only time i've ever been scammed in china at all exact uh, exact same situation for me in hong kong i got uh in the airport taxi and she claimed that she had forgotten to turn off the meter from the last fare so it ended up costing me 500 when it should have cost me 100 something so very similar situation yeah and it, yeah it sucks <clears throat> that was also the only scam i've fallen for in china but let's not paint a rosy picture because chinese people have to go through a lot worse and tourists go through a lot worse as well Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. I just wanted to say that the black taxi scam is huge in mainland China. So if you ever are here traveling, make sure you take an official looking taxi from a taxi rank. All the train stations have taxi ranks, right? All, like, just about everywhere. Uh, you know, train stations, airports, that kind of thing. Bus stations, they all have taxi ranks. Take a real taxi, make sure they turn on the meter. Because that's just something you don't want to, you know, happen to you. All right. So anyway, tourist scams. I think we got to talk about the tea ceremony scam. And how about you tell everybody about that? Big time. So uh, the the most prevalent, most prolific scam here. Those are prostitutes, by the way. Okay. But uh, dude, I don't see those very often anymore. So how about you tell us about that tea house scam? So the most prolific or most prevalent uh, scam here in China is <laughs> prostitution. Now is um is the tea house scam and the tea house scam basically are, is when a bunch of pretty girls will come out to you in the street beckon you into a tea house to have a traditional chinese tea ceremony and a lot of tourists especially you know single guys will come here with their oriental fantasy that wow i'm gonna have a traditional tea ceremony with these lovely girls so they'll go and fall prey to it they'll go inside the tea house they'll have tea poured for them the scam is you know it actually has mo there's motions to it and actually get served tea but in the end when the bill comes it usually is between 800 and I've heard up to a 10,000 RMB uh, fee. So basically, if you refuse to pay it, they've got thugs there. Could be mafia, could be hired thugs, whatever. Anyway, they're there 
to beat you up basically if you don't pay so they'll intimidate you until you pay uh, yeah it's incredibly common and so many people so many of my subscribers have fallen prey to it and they often send me messages you know and uh, I try to warn people as much as I can but it's it's just one of those things you know it's a heat of the moment especially a single guy two fairly attractive girls will come and approach you and you're hooked you know now you mentioned that you know the scams are pretty bad for actual Chinese residents and I'm gonna go into that now because it's actually way worse if you're a Chinese resident the kind of scams that happen here there are all sorts of email scams uh, message like SMS text scams are huge phone call scams and I'll just give you an example of one which is really despicable because I get those messages like at least once a week and it'll say something like Lao Ba or Lao Ma, which is basically an endearing way to say mother or father, right? So it'll, they'll, they'll say like, uh, mother or father, I really need your help. I've run out of money. My phone's got no power. I'm stuck here in wherever, some strange place. I need like a couple of hundred RMB to take the bus back home. Please, can you send it to this account? You know, that kind of thing. And people fall for that because they target just blanket so many so many people so there'll be an elderly person who gets this message right who doesn't know any better and they'll be like oh my child is in in peril so they'll send money to this random bank account and that's just the tip of the iceberg there's so many scams like this it's terrible so yeah uh, they're just it's I, I just don't know how to explain how many different kinds of scams there really are here which target people of all walks of life sure I just want to say that it feels like I'm in a, like one of those police chase scenes where you like drive through people's laundry and stuff, like <laughs> yeah. to get away from the cops. You know those action movies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Anyway, um, scams in China can be pretty nasty, and I want to remind you guys: no matter where you are, there's a lot of prostitutes around. No matter where you are, don't forget to stay safe and don't get scammed. Whether you're in Africa, America, or in China, and also don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't like, comment, or subscribe, as always guys, wherever you are, stay awesome.